Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Wani. Hello and welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you. It's great to be here. It really uh, is. I, and we've been waiting a while because we've both been busy. So I'm so excited. I was just saying before we hit record that I went through and looked at our original conversation about all the topics that you cover and you cover so many things that I just want to know more about, or I would like to delve deeper into. So we are going to talk today about herbal somatics yes. and yeah. I want to know what got you to even go to learning about herbal somatics? Like, how did you, how did you get there? Right. Well, for me, first off, you know, we go all the way back to childhood. I am a childhood abuse survivor. So walking through that has been a big part of my life. And so there's been a lot of talk therapy I've been in and out of um, throughout my life. I have, you know, PTSD, like kind of blended with complex PTSD because it, it lasted, you know, my entire childhood and into adulthood. And so, you know, having to peel back those complicated relationships with family is, is a huge thing. And, you know, the more I've researched and I've understood, the more I understand how growing up affected who I was, who I am today and how I grew up and the way my brain works, um, the way my body now works. Uh, when I got diagnosed with fibro, I want to say it was probably 2018, I believe, you know, I've not had a pain-free day since then. Um, so I live with chronic pain now. And I remember that, you know, I was really frustrated when it first happened. I did not like the diagnosis. I was so angry. I was like, what is this? It's just some cop out. And, you know, they just don't know what's wrong with me. And so they're just throwing a label at me. And the more I research it and the more I began to understand it, I began to understand how fibro affected my central nervous system and how much my central nervous system has been affected throughout my life. You know, there's so much stress a body can take before it starts, you know, fritzing and frazzling. And that's, you know, when you look at fibro and how it can affect the body, it's a very, you know, a lot of heat, a lot of friction. There's, you know, a lot of that going on in the body and it's sending out these signals that don't actually match up with what's going on. And so you've gone a little, little haywire and a lot of that is because your body has been overloaded and it can be overloaded with like stress, what's going on, you know, in your life, your job, your family, but we also put stress on it by what we put into it um, and what it can manage. And there's a lot of things that we don't actually understand. For example, I cannot have dairy, but do you know what I've been eating for most of my life? Dairy, because it's delicious. And, you know, <laughs> hard to turn down ice cream when you're stressed. Right. And so, you know, but what I didn't understand is that was actually adding to my issues. Like my body does not process it. As a child, I would throw up when I would have dairy. And yet I basically forced myself to get used to that. Because, you know, that's what we had around us. There wasn't right. a lot of other options back then other than you just don't have it. And so there's things like that that I found out that I was doing to my body. And when COVID hit in 2020, I think for me, this is where it really became like, what am I going to do? Because people were out there talking about, you may not be able to get your prescriptions. You may not be able to have access to certain things. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Yeah. If I can't have my medication. I was on such a large dose that if I missed, and I had to take it three times a day, if I missed it within a couple of hours, I was shutting down. My brain wasn't working right. Like my whole body, everything would just start shutting down. And it was a really scary feeling to be like, oh my gosh, all of a sudden it could be ripped out of me. You know, my coping, my ways to cope and to deal with this is just going to be gone. And then what do I do? Um, I, at the same time, I was really doing a lot of ancestral work, trying to understand my lineages and stuff and where I came from. And I had always known that I wanted to be an herbalist at some point when I grew up. And I had kind of put that on the back burner because, you know, work and kids and all of these things. And um, I was like, I'll just do it when I retire. And in 2020, I also lost my little sister to suicide. And oh. it helped me understand that and we, and in that process, we also lost several very close family friends that were older that had come, you know, been diagnosed with cancer or, you know, liver issues, all of these things. And a lot of them had just retired and I just kind of started thinking about it. And I was like, you know, I don't have any guarantees that I'm going to make it to my retirement. And even if I do make it to my, my retirement, I don't know if I'm going to have the capacity to be able to do anything. So it's right. like now all I'm guaranteed is right now. 
And so that's really kind of, I started looking and started thinking about that. And I was like, you know, I don't want to be tied to prescription medications that could be taken away or may not have access to. I need to find a different way to do this. Like this isn't the life I want to be leading. Yeah. Like in it, you know, we talk about these midlife crises, but you know, I look and I laugh at that term because for me, it's been multiple times in my life that I've come up against something and it's been a crisis, you know, and how we mm-hmm. term crisis. But really for me, it's been a realignment of, am I where I want to be? Am I who I want to be? And if I'm not, what can I do about it? And it's small steps, I think, is what I have found most of all. You know, I am no longer on prescription medication. It took me two years to get wow. off of it and to find a different way. And I have had to make a lot of changes. And some of them, I'm not always like 100% at, but I can tell when I start getting off and I've got, you know, and yeah. then it's like, okay, either you get back on track or you're going to have to go the prescription route again. Like, it's always my choice. Nobody's forcing me to do this. And I can tell you, my doctors all thought I was crazy. None of them offered a lot of guidance or anything like that on what to do, how to go mm-hmm. about it. It was all trial and error. I'm very lucky that I have a great support team at home with, you know, my husband and my kids that, you know, they were able to understand a lot of the behavior changes that were happening. Um, You know, I'd be really honest about, you know, I'm stepping down again. Here's, you know, some of the things we might see if I seem tense or, you know, anything like that. No, it's not you know that this is what I'm going through and I'm dealing with extra pain right now until I can find a new baseline again, until I can normalize this feeling within me. And it was a lot of that. And so that's really for me, how the herbal somatics came about. It was really taking all of the things that I had learned going through the talk therapy and bringing it into my body and working with herbs to kind of help me as I was going through that. And so, you know, when I was having to look at my diet, that was really triggering for me. As a child, I was not allowed to eat whatever I wanted. I was, you know, I had to ask permission. It was, it's still a very triggering thing that I have to work through. But I found things like Rose has been probably one of my best friends as I've gone through this is just being able to show me that, I can do hard things while still being soft that, you know, my ability to comfort and put myself as a priority was okay, you know, and Mm -hmm. helping do that, you know, helping provide that protection around the heart when I was like beating myself up because, you know, this seemed too hard or because I wasn't being completely a hundred percent with the changes and being like, you know what, it's okay. Tomorrow's a new day and helping me reframe that almost providing some buffering there. I want to say, you know, lavender and, you know, women bomb, those two were also like really helpful of when I would get into those down spots, especially women bomb on helping like shift those those perspectives and, you know, that way I was looking and feeling in my body and just kind of helping me lift me up a little bit. And I think that, you know, we don't always understand how herbs and any plants, honestly, can really be able to help us in that way. That's what I was going to ask. Like besides getting into books, um, you know, looking all up about herbs, like how, how do you, how did you know? what to take to help with your fibromyalgia? Like, is it, is it nerves? Is fibromyalgia totally nerves? So it could be throughout your whole body or. It can be throughout your whole body. It is like from a lot of the research that's come out that they're looking at, they understand that it affects their central nervous system Okay. and how it expresses though will be different in different people. And so I actually go to school for herbalism. So I've been studying for the last couple of years in a formal study. Um, I'm finishing up my community herbalist certification. Um, I go to a school uh, called, uh, it's the uh, Commonwealth um, Holistic Herbalism based out of Boston. And I really love the program. I really love the teachers. But one of the things that I think I got the most out of that really helped me was understanding the energetics of me and what I was working with. So the different herbs that I was working with. And, you know, a lot of times we come to 
herbalism, just like I did. I, I want something else. I don't want to take prescriptions. I want, right. you know, to replace them. And it's not like a one for one. And it took me a long time to understand that. It's like, well, what herb is good for a headache? Well, I don't know. It depends on how your headache is expressing. How did it even come to be? You know, I found out that when I eat gluten, like it affects my head. It doesn't like affect, give pain, pain in my body. It gives inflammation in my body. So my hands will swell. I can notice the swelling in my hands. Um, I I can notice that my head is foggier um, and it's not apparent. It's not like as soon as I eat it, it happens. It actually takes a few days and it'll last about it. No, it takes a few hours and it will last like a day or so as long, like until I've stopped eating it. And then I can notice how it affects and it clears out. Gosh. And so it's, it's things like that, that they don't tell you. Like my youngest recently is having to go through some eliminations because they're having some digestion issues. And they were like, well, if your stomach, if you don't get sick from it, then you don't have a issue with it. And I was like, well, that's not actually entirely true. It's more than just your stomach that these things can affect. Sure. And I, yeah, I don't necessarily notice issues with my stomach until I have a lot of it. Right. And by then I'm already having these other issues. Yeah. And so, you know, when I was looking at fibro, it was okay, well, what can help my nervous system? And so there's like some basic things like as a society, we don't actually get enough magnesium in our diets. Right. And that is huge for our nervous system. It's what helps like our myelin sheath. It helps us, you know, it helps our cells, you know, all of those things that we need that rely on each other or they're all links in a chain. Mm -hmm. And so really understanding, you know, how that affected my body, what are some of the base things that I need to know? And it's, what are my food allergies? You know, am I getting enough of the right, you know, supplements in me like magnesium mm -hmm. that we don't get enough of. And then I work a lot with nervines and nervines have been, so they are a class of herbs um, that really help our nervous system and really can work on our nervous system. They can help, you know, for fibro personally, it's for me, it's a dry, it's a very dry, like energetics and hot. So, you know, when I am, when the pain he comes in and I'm having a flare, it feels very like hot burning, you know, kind of sensation mm -hmm. in the joints, um, a lot of inflammation that kind of comes in sometimes in the hands, depending on what I'm eating. And so when I look to really address that, I'm looking at working with like some really like tonic type of nervines that are really meant to like nourish the nervous system mm -hmm. and help like replenish and repair it. And that's slow work. And right. so, you know, you have to be doing all of the things sometimes. And I guess for me, the important thing is you got to just start somewhere, picking one thing until you're comfortable with it and then adding another thing in right instead of trying to do it all at once because yeah. when I was doing that I was getting so overwhelmed yeah because so then you don't know what works because that's what, really that's how don't. I am I'm like yeah. I'll just take all the things <laughs> it's true and then it's and like then, oh if I feel better I don't even know what it what did it <laughs> it's you're so right you I mean and that's really so when I really work with people and stuff like that we do one herb at a time it's like okay what do we want to work on and let's mm -hmm. try this let's try this for a couple of weeks and see how does that make the body feel you know do you have any adverse effects because there's people you'll take some and next thing you know you've got some dry spots on your that are coming up on your hand, you can't understand why you're dry and you're itchy. Well, it could be that you're a really dry person. And I just threw a really dry herb at you and your body is not knowing how to handle that. And it's expressing and having dry, itchy skin. Right. And that's its side effect. You know, we're used to these side effects from, you know, these prescription right. herb is no different. It's going to affect your body. They are potent medicines. And, you know, if you take something that your body doesn't like, it's going to react just like any other thing. Yeah. I wrote down what you had said, um, that there's no one way find your way. I love that because, yeah. um, lemon balm might be wonderful for you. And then yeah. I take it and, and it's, it has no effect or, you know, yeah. uh, whatever. So this probably seems so dumb, but I'm going to ask mm. it anyway. Are you just taking it like as a tea or is this herbs that are like you're sprinkling herbs on your food or what are you doing? I do it all. So one okay. of the things that as you train as an herbalist is you learn 
all of the different ways or as many different ways as you can with working with something. So there are herbs that I will work with as tinctures. Um, there's herbs and mushrooms that I work with as food. So I actually drink bone broth every single day. Mm-hmm. And so that's always something that I keep on me and which is great for, you know, getting a lot of those like, um, like magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, all of those things that we don't normally get these trace elements that we need. You can get that through bone broth. And so, but I load it up with like mushrooms and seaweeds and and also things like ginger and turmeric, like all of these food style herbs that we traditionally would have eaten anyways. Mm-hmm. And so I can consume that. So food, um, I also do it in tinctures. Like I said, teas, I'm always drinking tea. I've got a mm-hmm. tea right now. Um, and then I also like working with them topically. So for my pain, especially, you know, I have used a lot of different um, actual topical stuff that I've worked with. So Lobelia is amazing in terms of helping relax the muscles as is like cayenne. So like, t- I think everybody mm-hmm. knows of tiger balm and stuff like that. Those things can be really great at helping relieve pain topically in the body. And it can really get into your system, like into your skin and sink down into the muscles okay. and really provide a lot of relaxing relief, some stimulation to help things get moving. Um, you know, we like to think that, you know, cortisol is a bad thing, but too much cortisol is a bad thing. Right. But you actually do want some inflammation and things like that in your body, because when you, you it's bringing like nutrients to the surface. Mm -hmm. And so if you're, you can work with herbs that way to kind of help bring some of those things into the surface where you need them. And so I really love working with topicals that way. It's an excellent way to be able to get some of that medicine directly into where you need it. And I think that's probably something that, you know, when you're looking at how, what's the best way to work with an herb, it's like, well, where do you need that herb to hit? You know, different herbs have different affinities for different like systems within our bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, some may have like affinities for for the heart. So I think things like hawthorn is a big one for the heart. Um, Rose can be really great for the heart where I have found like ladies mantle and like red clover for me or even red raspberry leaf can be great when we're talking like the pelvic region. Mm-hmm. And so it's really like, well, what do you want? Where do you need it to hit? And then what is the best way you can work with it to get it directly to those areas? So if you're looking for like the urinary system, well, you're going to want to drink it and you're, wanna, you're gonna want to do it in water versus alcohol because alcohol will hit your liver. Like it's going to be go direct that way versus the water will go through your urinary tract. And so, and then it's the herbs. Some herbs actually extract better in water versus an alcohol or something like that. And so you, you know, you don't, you think it's because it's nature, it's easy. And so (laughs) that's like, that's totally true. (laughs) Or, Or like, um, you know, we're all love our Amazon, you know? So it's like, oh, I just watched this. TikTok and they said Hawthorne is great. So I'm just going to yeah. go on Amazon. I mean, I don't know how much study and research is done behind things that are just out there on the internet to buy. Like, are you supposed That's to true. find an herbalist? Are you supposed to find um, an apothecary type of place? that you trust and that's, you source it from somebody around you. Is that your best bet? So I do. So there are certain places like Star West Botanical, Mountain Rose Herbs, if that's their business, they're bigger wholesale, you can do smaller type stuff. Um, But going to a local apothecary, always a fan of because there's not enough of them. And Mm -hmm. it is like, that we need, we need more, we need more. And so I'm always a fan of supporting our local apothecaries. And I do really recommend that people work with somebody because there's a lot of herb drug interactions. Mm -hmm. The last thing we want to do is cause somebody harm, Right. you know, give them something that's not going to be great for their body type. And then the next thing, you know, they don't want to have anything to do because it didn't work for me. Maybe it wasn't that it didn't work. Maybe it was just the wrong herb. Maybe you needed a different herb. And Mm -hmm. that's one of the great things about herbalism is just because this herb didn't work doesn't mean another one. There are so many herbs out there that you can try. Um, 
but it does take a perspective of experimentation, of exploration. It's And it's really no different. And that's why I try to explain to people, it's no different than going to the doctor. They don't know if this prescription is really going to work. They tell you, you have True. to take it for at least a month. Yeah. Before we know whether or not it'll work and then we'll make changes. That's true. Herbalism, yeah. And herbalism is the same way. You know, we're not going to know right away. We're going to look at your body type and the way that you express, and we're going to make a recommendation based on that. And then we're going to have you try it. How does your body feel over the next two to four weeks? You know, if in two weeks, you're really having some difficult reaction, well, we may need to add something to it. We may need to try something completely different. And so it's really taking that perspective. And for me personally, and maybe not all herbalists would agree with this, but me personally, I want to do it with your medical teams. I want them to know what you have going on yeah, just so that they're aware. You know, I have an elderly gentleman that I work with and, you know, he was working and they had him on, um, he wasn't working real well with the sleep medication. So they gave him, um, basically, um, it's not, what was it? It's like an Ativan kind of thing, you know, mm-hmm. it's just. For people who have, um, you know, anxiety and stuff, that's what they gave him to help him sleep. And he really didn't like it. It wasn't helping. Um, he was on a lot of different medications for his heart and blood thinners and stuff like that. And so yeah. I wanted to make sure that his doctor knew what he was doing. And his doctor knew, his doctor said, okay, let's try it. And as long as you feel okay, we're fine. Um, it wasn't because they don't get trained in herbs. Like they don't know they're right. Right. That's not their, you know, Mm -hmm. area of expertise, but if you keep them involved, they can help you monitor if anything is happening. And maybe that is the reason why. And so then we have to back off, especially when we're dealing with people, most of America is on prescriptions. Let's be honest. Like that awareness. Yeah. And there's just too many things that go wrong. And then you're adding not just, you know, are they on these prescriptions, but then they go pick up some sort of tincture that has like seven different herbs in it. And you really don't know which one, you know, cause that Mm -hmm. or even these supplements that they have out there for these different herbs nowadays not always are they using the whole plant like they're going in and they're like pulling out a specific constituent and then they're using that exponentially like far greater than you would get in just taking a tea Mm -hmm. and so and that can have really adverse effects out there and so as part of like the training that I've gone through one of the things that we've had to learn is we've actually got to go out there and we study some of the research that has been done in the experimentation so that we can understand you're saying that there's something wrong with this but why Mm -hmm. and in some cases when you go into these studies you found that they isolated a, a specific part of the plant and that's what they made this medication off of Okay. And that's why it's having, so if you don't use it that way, if you're just using it as a tea or a tincture, well, usually it's okay. Cause it's not, you're not using it at such a high rate that it would actually cause mm-hmm. something to be wrong with you. And so it's right. like very, like, this is a huge, huge yeah. world out there. Is there any, or are there any uh, universally like something that everybody should be utilizing in their life at some, you know, during the day, everybody could use it. Like magnesium, I know is one that I hear about and you never know if it's a passing fad, you know, do we really need it? You know, it's just who you never know. But as far as herbs go, is there one that you would think that would be overall good for anyone beneficial for say stress or, uh, you know, just things like that for people that are looking to just dip their toe in the whole herbal thing. And maybe they don't, typically drink tea, but if they knew that there was a really good tea out there that had blah, blah, blah in it, you know, just to get them started. Yeah. So first of all, we sometimes underestimate the fact of how great chamomile can be. Yeah. Um, and now there are people that are, some people are allergic to that family and so they can't take chamomile. Um, and I'll speak to that in a minute, but like chamomile is something that's out there for most people. Chamomile is, you know, when you're working with it in a medicinal way, you maybe use two tea bags instead of one kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And also you want to let it steep for like 20 or 30 minutes. And then you'll notice that chamomile actually takes on like a little bit of bitterness. 
Um, and bitter is a largely underrated like action within the body. Like bitter actually keep, gets our digestive systems like going. It mm. helps us, you know, move things through us. And so um, when I think about, you know, those types of, you know, stress in America today, um, definitely chamomile. But one that I probably recommend the most to people for stress, it's for people. And a lot of us have this issue is when we have these things that start circling in our head and yeah. this tension that sits, sits in our neck and sits in our shoulders like if I think about most people I know that's where we carry a lot of the tension <laughs> gold cap is one that I recommend for most people for okay. that gold cool. cap is excellent it doesn't so from the studies that I've looked at and the different profiles that I've read and the people that I work with so like the gentleman that I was just explaining mm -hmm. that has all of those that's one of the things that he works with is school is school cap um and for his purposes he uses it mostly as a tincture although he does have it as a tea as well that he can work with because he likes tea and school cap is really great it's really great and it has an affinity for the shoulders the neck area for helping a mind like stop circling to kind of quiet down for me it kind of brings me out of my head and down back into my body um and so and it because it doesn't have a lot of of interactions with medications it's fairly safe for most people to be able to take um now for me it's very cold and so it's like a very cold herb and I tend to be a very cold person and so I add a little cinnamon into it Cinnamon is great. Um, cinnamon is something that I also, I take in capsules actually. Oh it's yeah. It's wonderful at helping with like for sugar, like working and to help eliminate sugar. It's one of those things that's helped support me right. um, for sugar elimination and processing and metabolizing it. Um, but that's a great way to be able, like if you take skull cap and it's just a little too cool for you. And like, for me, it, it expresses like as soon as I drink it, I can tell that, you know, it's, it's, it's almost feels like water and it feels very cool in my body. And so when I add a little cinnamon into it, it helps warm it up a little bit. And so it makes it a little bit more okay. neutral for my body. Got it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So you really do have to play around with it. Um, yeah. So do you grow all your, a lot of your own herbs? I wish, but I do love foraging. Um, I'm still learning how to be a a gardener. <laughs> I actually love perennials because mother nature does the work and mother nature knows <laughs> what it's doing way better than I do. Um, I do a lot of foraging and just like the wild edible herbs that grow out there. So I love working with violet. Uh, violet's a wonderful demulcent and it's also a lymphatic. So it kind of helps move things through. Um, it's especially like, it's a, also one that you can eat actually, like the leaves can be eaten mm -hmm. like spinach you can steam them and eat them that way um so i do love working with a lot of herbs that i can collect um i do I like mushrooms like that's probably i do a lot of food safe herbs with people when we're first starting because mm -hmm. ginger is one that most people can work right. with turmeric mo most people can work with we don't say enough about shiitake mushrooms and how great that is for your immune system like from the bone marrow out like how it can help support the body seaweeds like like we don't talk enough about our mm -hmm. sea vegetables and how great and moisturizing that is for our body. Topically, like seaweed is great for pain. Like you got a break or sprain, you can just rehydrate some seaweed and put it directly on your skin for like helping with the pain management and stuff like that. So it's really soothing. Um, aloes and one too, that we don't talk enough about, like mm -hmm. there's definitely all of these like food safe herbs that we can be working with, um, to really help, you know, build not just our digestive system, but just all body, total body, like support and help there. What about for hot flashes as I'm having one right <laughs> now? <laughs> I'm like, yes. hot, hot, hot. oh, ask about the hot. Oh one. my goodness. It's true. <laughs> so I have found really working with those cooling herbs has been really actually very helpful for me as I've moved through that. Um, and surprisingly enough, one of the plants that I actually was really surprised to work with a lot was mugwort. Mugwort, which I traditionally work with for like stomach issues and stuff like that. And a lot of people know mugwort is like your dream herb and stuff like that mm -hmm. to work with for dreaming. 
I found it's been really helpful for the hot flashes and stuff like that for me. Um, I've also found that as I start removing my food allergens, the hot flashes like are not as readily apparent. Like the more I'm eating things I'm not supposed to, the more hot flashes I seem to get. Interesting. And so that is definitely an area that I would look at. Things like ladies mantle is very cooling, um, has an affinity for the female rep- reproduction system. Mm-hmm. So that can be really helpful. There's uh, a any of those. I'm sorry, go ahead. Say that again. Yeah. I said, there's definitely a lot of different ones that we can, you can work with as part of that. Okay. Rose is cooling. Like just working with rose can be really helpful because it is overall very cooling to the system. Right. So, um, would you just have to do research to see if any of those would be stimulants? Like if I wanted to drink a tea before going to bed, that would help maybe if I get the hot flashes mostly at night, you know, when I'm sleeping, it's not as bad now as what it was, but is there a tea that I could have before bed that helps with that? I would be interested to see how skull cap would actually be able to help with that because it is the very cooling herb. Um, it is also one for relaxation that can be okay. really helpful. So looking to seeing how your body responded to that mm-hmm. would be interesting to see because it would be one that would be perfect to take in the evening to kind of help in that way. And because it's so cooling to the system, it would be interesting to see how that assisted you. Mm-hmm. That's, so that's would be my first recommendation and be, let's look and see how that affects your body and how that supports you and does it make any difference you know mm-hmm. does it help with the sleep but maybe it doesn't help with the hot flash in which case it'd be like okay well let's try something else instead yeah so back at the beginning you said that you were looking into your lineage and stuff so that I, that was interesting to me did you what did you find huh. out so what I found out was that I actually, my grandmother and my my great grandmother were both curanderas. And so they were traditional Mexican healers. And so my grandmother, I knew, worked with herbs as a kid. Um, that's why I always knew I wanted to, to work with herbs. I was a horrible patient. I was pouring <laughs> tea in all of the plants. Um, and I, I know my grandmother is laughing now. Like, She's made comments. So I'm a shamanic practitioner. So I actually work in cross realms and stuff like that. And I have been lucky enough to be able to work with my own family that has crossed over. Um, But like my kid does not like tea. So, you know, I know she's laughing. Like she's very amused of where I sit now. (laughs) But my great grandmother also. um, So she, my great grandmother was uh, born in Central America. Um, She was indigenous to Central America. Um, We don't know what tribes she was a part of because um, she, while she spoke her indigenous language and also Spanish, because they lived in the U.S., they Like they were, you know, that was the time of the Indian Removal Act, things like that. So most of our family that was indigenous did not provide any of that information to the next generation, kind of kept that just for protection and stuff like that. Um, But she was known to do a lot of ceremonies um, and also knew so much about the different herbs and how to work with them. And we have lost, like our family did so much to remove our hands from the land so we could have a better life so that we wouldn't have to work as hard as they did that we would be able to assimilate and just like anybody else and be treated Mm -hmm. like anybody else but in doing that we lost so much we lost so much of the knowledge and the understanding and so there's there's quite a few of us within our family that we've done quite a bit of work to try to understand, you know, where we come from, you know, what was it that we knew and just start where we're at. And yeah. say, you know, I love that. we don't have all the history, but we can at least start bringing some of this back. And so, you know, my oldest is grown. She's 22. Um, my youngest is 14. So they have to deal with most of this. So this will be part of, you know, my youngest's life, but not part of my oldest. And I can't do anything about that, but I can do something about their kids being in their kids' lives and, you know, bringing back that knowledge and bringing them back closer to earth and working with the land and working with nature, not just in consuming nature, but 
looking at nature as our teacher, as our way of saying, okay, look how this pl these plants act when they're together. You know, look at how dandelion, despite, you know, the adversity that it faces, it can grow out of the concrete. Like, that's resiliency, you know? Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's what that plant can bring us. Not just, you know, it can help your liver or what have you, but it is a representation of how to be resilient in an environment that is cold and that is hard and is difficult. And really, you know, helping them see that and building that connection and that relationship. Because I think not having that is part of the reason why we are where we are today. I believe that too. And there was that special that was on Netflix all about mushrooms. Um, oh my God. Paul, is it Stemis or what is his Stemis. name? Yeah. yeah. And my sister is a teacher. So she always is looking at learning documentaries and stuff. And she was like, yeah. Dawn, you need to watch this. And so we did, we just had nothing else to watch. It was like, okay, Carrie asked me to watch it. We'll watch it. And oh my gosh, it was yeah. fascinating. So fascinating. It is amazing. I would love to do a whole episode about mushrooms. I just think we just don't know about all so the things. We don't know. Yeah. Not just mushrooms, obviously everything. Like I think Chinese medicine is interesting. I would love to learn more yeah. about indigenous, you know, all of it, the, but you're keeping it alive. Even if you don't know all of the stuff from way back, we have yeah. a lot easier way of resourcing things now too than people it's did true. back then so you might be able to get your hands on things that make it easier and it's then true. when you teach it to people then they're more eager to try and do it themselves if it doesn't seem like you know as hard as what they it's had to true. deal with it really is and we all have these backgrounds let's be honest i mean maybe we're further removed from it maybe it's been a you know a few hundred years but mm -hmm. we all have these indigenous backgrounds and that we were you know lands that were our lands and you know a lot of people not everybody but there's people who came here not because they wanted to but because they had to right and they got their you know those lands just ripped away from them and mm -hmm. they are you know bereft from it and you know there's I think there's like there's grief that sits in all of us for that lack of connection that we don't always acknowledge at the end right. of the day yes um, there's just there's so much knowledge that we've all lost within our own families because this is how we took care of ourselves before mm -hmm. modern medicine yeah and truthfully we've outsourced our own care to the medical system to just take care of it for us. And, right. you know, we probably should save the miracle for work for when we actually need miracles, because there's a lot that we could do on our own, you know, and, and empowering ourselves to fix our health, to address, you know, some of the issues that we have. It's just not as easy. It's not convenient. Right. They make a lot of really bad things for our system, very convenient for us. And when we're in these, you know, in our way of life where it's go, 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 go. And you don't have, a, you know, a second to breathe. It can be really difficult to figure out how do I get out of this? Yeah. How do I do something different? Right. Yeah. It's good to break those patterns. I'm so happy for you that your symptoms are being relieved. You know, that you, if you still have the condition yeah. that at least the symptoms are alleviated, you know, to the most, you know, yes. as much as possible, but uh, I'm yeah. sorry you had all that that you had to go through as a child and it, but it's made you who you are today. And it is, it's true, but it's definitely not gone away. And I think that's the biggest thing that I want people to understand. Like I still deal with chronic pain. Like all of those things are still there, Right. but the body is amazing in its ability to be resilient, what it can manage and, you know, how our brains can compartmentalize that stuff and help us manage that. Yeah. And then how we are able to then work with like our herbal allies or, you know, fungi allies, all of those things to say, okay, I still need some relief. So how else can I go about that? And it's like, oh, well, you can work with Lyndon and it will be really moisturizing to your central nervous system. It's mm -hmm. really good at that. Um, and so, and it's really good at, you know, helping center and calm me. And it's also quite tasty. So it's like, you know, it's just finding all of these new friends. It's kind of how I look at it. Right. That I get to work with and learn about and not just learn about, you know, how they affect my body, but 
how have they affected our world? Like there's yeah. legends and, you know, all of these mythos out there about plants and it's for a reason. Right, and right. So I really love like, that's one of my favorite things is to look up all of the mythologies and stuff like that. Look at the spiritual ways that we work with plants, you know, not just the physical ways that we work with them. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's a whole body thing. They don't just affect me physically. They affect me mentally, emotionally, energetically, and spiritually. I love that. I love that so much. Okay. Well, I could talk to you for 10 hours, so we're not going to do that today, <laughs> but you'll have to come back because I want to touch on like, you're a death doula too. I would, I've had a death doula yeah. on before and I just found it so interesting and deep, you know, yeah. just, we all take everything for granted, you know, we just, do. It, and it's easy. You just, we're all busy and going about our lives. But when you stop and you think about all this stuff, it's just amazing. So tell people how they can find you. Well, you can, so I have a website that you can go to it's hidden hollow holistics. Um, and, um, so you can look me up there. I'm on Instagram and I'm also on Facebook, um, also under hidden hollow holistics. Um, so you can definitely reach out to me. I do a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, what I call explorations with people I do shamanic healing. I do intuitive like explorations with people. If you're not really sure where to start, that's usually what I recommend. Um, and people, I recommend people to set up a consult. I do free consults with people. It's really important that I understand whether or not we're a good work fit. Like I want people to be able to be supported. I want to be able to support you in the way that you need. So I'm definitely going to make sure we're a good fit for that. Sure. Um, and so we do a lot of, I do one-on-one -on -one herbal explorations where we, you know, we just kind of take one thing and we kind of work through that before we start anything else really big about creating space for people to be able to do the self-exploration. Um, I think that's an important work that we all should be going through all of the time. Like yeah. anytime there's a pivotal moment in our lives it's a great opportunity to stop and reflect on okay is this the route that I want to go and why and you yeah. know does this serve who I want to be um I do a lot of digital explorations is what I call them I create workbooks and journals to kind of really help people you know kind of explore some of this stuff with themselves because there's a lot of solo explorers so it gives them a feel of things that they may want to work through themselves and they can always reach out if they want to explore further and stuff like that so definitely be able to look me up any of those ways and I'm always interested in just connecting with people People. Um, I do a lot of free engagements every quarter for people who, if, you know, if you're having a rough time, I never want that to be a, you know, a closed door on my website. I make a, a lot of free or low cost like options for people to go out there and explore. And I think that that's really important because, you know, we all need those things, especially if we're struggling. Of course. And that was part of the whole reason to have people like you on my podcast, getting some of that information out there that maybe they might not be privy to, you know, they don't yeah. have time to sit and read a book about it or, you know, just right. have it be a quick half hour, 45 minute, just to get enlightened a little bit and figure yeah. out if that's something that they want to incorporate in their lives. So Moni, thank you so much. I totally want to have you that's back great. again. So I appreciate your Absolutely. time and we will definitely stay in touch. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.